It's fall, y'all. <laughs> With the polls opening across the state today, Karen Swinson talked to one of our political analysts about what to expect from this election. They help us break down the governor's race and other big races on the ballot. And joining us this morning is political analyst Ron Fauche. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So you've got 24 hours before the polls open, less than that actually now. And let's talk about um, you know, President Trump coming tonight and the impact he could have on the governor's race. Well, that's always an unknown when a president of the United States comes in. but And it's particularly unknown because Donald Trump is not coming in for a candidate. He's coming in to stir up Republican turnout. So, uh, and in the past, he has proven his ability to do that. So that's something that the Republicans are counting on and, uh, and the Democrats are fearful of. Are you expecting a runoff in this race? You know, it's right at, at the cusp right now. Uh, when you look at the numbers, uh, Governor Edwards could, could clearly win in the primary, but, uh, but if just one or two factors go the wrong way for him, he'll be in a runoff. And of course, the Republicans are trying to nationalize this race. Uh, and, and so do you think that's been effective so far? Well, I think it's showing signs of becoming more effective in the last couple of weeks. I don't think it was that effective uh, from the beginning, but you have to keep in mind that, that Governor Edwards' uh, popularity rating and job rating going into the last few weeks was, was really pretty good. Uh, he, was, he was more popular than the percentage of the people who were voting for him because of the partisan difference. Do you have any thoughts on who might likely um, challenge the governor in a runoff? Would it be Rispone? Would it be Abraham? And then kind of the next question would be, who has a better shot of beating him in the long run? Well, I think over the last couple of weeks, Rispone has clearly had more momentum than Abraham had. Okay. And most of the polls are showing that he is he's he got into second place and and, and moved Abraham down to third place. Uh, so, you know, unless something major happens that that changes that uh, on election day with, with turnout or something, uh, he is more likely to be the, the runoff opponent if there is a runoff. And in terms of the general election, both of them are now polling about the same against Edwards in the general election with Edwards, you know, a pretty good bit ahead. Uh, some of the political analysts I talked to think Abraham would be the strongest Republican. As it stands now, I tend to think Responi might be the strongest Interesting. Republican. All right, there's going to be a lot of uh, races on the ballot. Insurance Commissioner Jim Donlin facing some pretty stiff competition this year. Yeah, that's turned into a, a, a very interesting race, much more so than I think people expected some months ago. Uh, most of the incumbent uh, statewide officials below governor usually have a fairly easy time getting reelected. Mm -hmm. But in this particular case, Donlin is in a dogfight, and uh, and you know we'll have to see what happens. But it could be close. And we should say against against uh, Tim Temple, Jefferson Parish President Cynthia Lee Shang, John Young, Lee Boncarrer. Um, what do you think is going to happen there? Well, speaking of dogfights, that's another one that's going to be uh, hard fought. Uh, uh, people on, on both sides think they can win or they think the race will be close. We don't know. I've heard so many different uh, rumors about poll results, it's hard to know what to believe, but, uh, but it certainly will be a race to watch. And do you think it will, run, it will uh, result in a runoff? Well, it, you know, it could. It, it, it just depends upon, uh, you know, what percentage of the vote this third candidate gets. And the same thing about the governor's race. If those minor candidates build up a few percent and it's a close race, it, could, it can throw these races into runoffs. Last question. I know you're going to join us mm -hmm. on Saturday night. You think it's going to be a late night? I think it might be. I think it might be a late night. All right, because I know so, we got to wait for those those uh, returns. And Orleans right. Parish will play a prominent role, probably in the gubernatorial race, Very right? With those Democratic so. so we votes. all should have big bags of popcorn. <laughs> we'll make sure we bring it. Thank you so Thank much, you. Ron Fauci, for joining us. And several people got ahead of the game by taking advantage of early voting in the metro area. More than 120,000 of you have already cast your ballot. Of course, there's the big LSU Florida game today that could be a factor. But political observers also tell us early voting could just be easier since there's so much more time. Eyewitness News political analyst Ron Fauche says a side effect of early voting is a longer, more aggressive and expensive campaign season. Because instead of building up to a crescendo for one day, that crescendo comes a few weeks before the election, but then you have to keep it going through the early voting period. Then you have to bring it back up on, on uh, right before Election Day again. So it's probably increasing the cost of campaigns by anywhere between 20 and 30 percent or more.
Again, the number of early voters in the metro area this year topped 120,000. That's about 40,000 more voters compared to four years ago. Well, the hype behind the LSU versus Florida game reached as far as the Oval Office. President Trump has this message to all voters who are thinking of skipping out on casting their vote. You are going to fire your Democrat governor who's done a lousy job and send a great Republican to the governor's mansion. When John Bell Edwards ran for office, he made your state a city. For all things election, you can head over to our new WWL-TV app. There you can find a sample ballot to get you ready for your trip to the polls. And look for election results tonight right here on Channel 4. Our live coverage will begin at 8 o'clock. We'll have analysis from Clancy Duvos, Ron Foshe, and Greg Rigamer.